Good. Uh, good. We're going to officially get started in a minute, but I could not ignore these beautiful faces. Uh, we usually just get to see the top of you, and so it's good to see all of you. So uh, we'll be starting in one minute. I call to order the Hamden County Commission meeting, our regular meeting of July the 1st. Welcome everyone. You are sitting in the midst of history. This is our restart and it's happening right now and it's not by any coincidence that it is the 1st of July. We cleaned up a little here uh, we did some repainting and we put up our commission sign up there. Didn't spend a lot of money for sure, but I want to thank our staff for uh, working on repainting and making sure that it was nice for all of you. This is our first time for in-person meetings since March 26, 2020. The first time uh, that this is the first time that in-person meeting has been held in the newly renamed Todd B. Portoon Center for County Government. And I think it's only appropriate that we have a long name on there, so yeah. This is also the first time uh, that the first African-American commissioner will conduct an in-person meeting as president of the commission. This is also the first time that our newest commissioner will take her seat in person as vice president, Vice President Alicia Reese. This is the first time that an elected group of women have presided over the county. In person, we're in person. Women are running. And this is also the first time that two African Americans have had the majority of the seats on the commission. This is also the first time that we've had our ASL interpreters in the room for our in-person meeting. And I could go on and on for first times, but once you're first, no one else can follow. The first. So um, I just wanted to say that we've also, since this last time, we have four commissioners during this pandemic. And our fourth commissioner was Commissioner Greg Kesterman. I don't know if he's here right now. He's our health commissioner. And he was at every meeting with us, trying to inform the public, being sure to inform the public of what was going on with COVID-19. So can we give him a hand? And I am very sure that my colleagues will have some things to say just a little bit later, but we will move into our agenda with a silent prayer. And I would only ask as we think about our silent prayer, uh, we think about those who are not sitting here with us who did not make it through COVID-19, whose families are suffering because of that. And so we do, not, we do not want to forget them. And also remember that COVID-19 is not over. Uh, we need to, to, to be very vigilant. We need to talk to people 
Uh, we need to encourage people to get vaccinations if they so wish. Uh, but let us not forget that this is not over. So at this moment, I would ask for a silent prayer. Amen. And if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So at this time, I'd like um, to change a, a few things how we used to do it. But anyway, I'd like for introductions to come forth so you know, even though you see the names in front, uh, I'd like for them to introduce themselves. We used to, I used to go down, oh, I didn't go down, Denise went down, <laughs> and introduce everybody. But I'd like for, everybody has a voice in this room, including you, of course. Um, and so if we could just introduce ourselves and start on my right side. Alicia Reeves, um, Vice President of the County Commission. Um, and Madam President, I just want to say, normally we have a swearing in in this room. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to have one because we have COVID. We did a drive through swearing in. Oh, my mic's it right there. Okay, so I'll go back. I'm Alicia Reese. I'm the Vice President of the Hamilton County Commission. And I was just saying, normally I would have had a uh, swearing in as we normally do in this room. Uh, but due to COVID, we weren't able to do that. We did have a drive in. Uh, swearing in and tried to be creative so people could participate uh, out at uh, New Prospect Baptist Church. But I want to take the time to also introduce my chief of staff. I didn't get to do that. Quentin Monroe, who is here, as well as uh, Edgar Malcolm, who's my legislative aide, so that you know who they are. And uh, also, uh, my family did not get to come in this room to see me get sworn in. So I do want to welcome my father, Dr. Stephen Reese Sr., who's with us today. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm Commissioner Julie uh, Jeff Aluto, County Administrator. Uh, Michael Friedman, Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office. Thank you all so much. We will proceed. I was looking at my notes that I had. And um, when I talked about kind of repainting this area it was not for us. It was because we knew that the homeowners were coming, which is you. So we did this for you, it was not for us to, as I said, to have a pleasant place to come. So we'll move forward and um, I'd like to make a motion for approval of the minutes of the previous session. Second. Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, yeah, okay. So, we're going to move forward. Our next item on the agenda uh, is public comments, um, and I do have several. So we're going to start. We also have a public hearing just a little bit later. But for public comments, we have Nick Talbert. If you can come forward, public comment is for two minutes, um, and then hopefully you can get everything in by then. Thank you and welcome. Yeah, I'm that weird guy that comes and speaks every year. Um, I also was the guy that fought hard to make the city pass to recognize the indigenous people that was here before Columbus. There's a lot of misnomers in history. Columbus didn't discover America. And one of the things about it, the Masons, I partnered with the uh, Freedom Center, the president with their educational department, with Hamilton County, and I'm looking to bring in the museum centers to talk about the Masons that was here. It ain't no more secret anywhere no more. Who the Masons were, we need to know. You see that sign back there? It's a sun. The Masons hat, the crown, represents the sun. That's who they honored was the sun. And there's a whole lot more history. All the slaves, they didn't come from Africa. Most of them was here. They didn't teach all these people how to speak English. They spoke Latin. Yes, Latin. All the schools were Latin. The Masons spoke Latin and they lived right here in the Republic 
That's why the Indians had the eagle. It's more to come to this. Thank you. And as you know, history is really important for all of us. We need to know our history uh, for sure. Okay, our next speaker is Reverend P.N. Everson. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I would not miss this historical moment for nothing in the world. And it took all of me not to stand up when Alicia was uh, introducing her family because I'm her auntie, Pian. You <laughs> see me regularly down here. You say, who is that lady? I'm her auntie, Pian. Okay. And I just wanted to be down here also to uh, voice my support for the Black Music Walk of Fame. We have so many wonderful musicians and many leaders in music from right here. And being the only African-American female of a 14-piece show band right. <laughs> entrance to that, I thought it only right that I should be here to have my voice of support and to say I'm very, very excited. Anything that we can do to help in this effort, please call me, let me know any music that you need. Please let me know. Any of you getting married, Kevin and Amber? <laughs> Need a 14 piece show band. Oh, oh. Congratulations, all of you. Thank you. We're looking forward to a great future together. Thank you yeah. so much. And we are very much aware of the history of Black music in Cincinnati, and our, our board is very supportive of that idea. Uh, our next speaker is Tyler Schmidt. Is he or is Tyler here? He was. I'll put him aside for a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Rhonda Schmidt. Oh, yes, she's with me. There were a couple of people here for a different hearing and they left. So oh, it's them. Okay. Because I have all the hearing stuff yeah. over here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. How about um, Stacy Grant? Hi, thank you very much for having us uh, here. Um, my topic is uh, care. Uh, uh, the uh, sheltering organization that has the contract currently for the Hamilton County Animal Shelter. Uh, I'm Stacy Grant, I'm an attorney, I'm an animal advocate. As many of you remember me, maybe, I don't know, maybe I uh, deceive myself. Um, <coughs> I understand that the care representative spoke with you on Tuesday and uh, I'd like to have my voice as well. Uh, we've been, I've been following them uh, care pretty carefully, at least on social media for the last year. Nobody else has had much else uh, in terms of opportunity uh, to follow things. Um, they have, as you know, a large and very popular social media presence. They maintain their social media image uh, round the clock. Uh, I believe they seem to be doing a good job promoting the animals, the adoptable dogs, um, stray intakes, uh, recruiting foster care. I, however, can't, um, you know, leave without voicing concerns. And uh, primarily what they are is that we don't know much else. Uh, I understand I'm going to way run out of time um, so it's very easy to be complacent, say, yay, we finally got a group that is doing everything right. We can now set this on the back shelf. When you're talking about companion animals who are sheltered for long periods of time, when you're talking about discretion in the euthanasia process, uh, veterinary practices, spay, neuter, and as I'm sure you observe, the crisis of overpopulation and of animal abandonment in the city. Um, I, you know, am concerned and would like to see more information mm -hmm. if that's uh, amenable to you. Thanks. Thank you, Stacy. And just uh, to let you know that our board will not be complacent as it relates to monitoring uh, this new uh, agency. They were doing a good job, but we, we don't want them to become complacent either. So, okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. All righty. Lisa Rabanus. Did I say that right? Okay. Uh huh. And please be sure to speak in the mic. So <coughs> 
Thank you. Uh, as I was here with Stacy Grant, and basically we're back. For those of you who weren't here or don't remember, my name is Lisa Rabanis. I'm a former assistant Hamilton, Hamilton, County, Hamilton County prosecutor and current criminal defense attorney and animal advocate. <laughs> Myself and others were here several years ago regarding the subpar performance of the SPCA as provider of the county's dog warden and county shelter services. Since August 1st, 20, CARE has been the provider of these services. I watched the virtual meeting on Tuesday where Carolyn Evans and Troy Taylor gave you their glowing marks. What you as county commissioners need to understand is that certain numbers can be skewed. And when you don't know what to ask or look for, looks can be deceiving. What should now be clear is that there is a motiv motivated group of concerned taxpayers who know what should be happening and still is not. This was not a personal attack against the SPCA in the past. This is a desire for our elected officials to hold an entity it has paid taxpayer money to, to provide appropriate services. As before, we are asking you, the county commissioners, to create an advisory committee to oversee this contract. This committee would be made up of volunteer vets, lawyers, a CPA, with animal sheltering and rescue background. This oversight will assure the taxpayer money is spent as it should. This committee will also insulate you, the county commissioners, from dealing with these issues as it will serve as a troubleshooter for any public complaints, bring any issues that arise from its audit or reviews to you. There are many issues at CARE that you all do not know about. We will bring that information forward to you from this point. I look forward to hopefully talking with you in more detail in the near future. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And I appreciate your last comment, especially when you said you're going to bring those Absolutely. concerns to us. So Absolutely. thank you so much. All right. Stefan Pryor. <laughs> My name is Stefan Pryor and I'm running for city council. So I want y'all to vote on me. Stefan Pryor, I approve that message, all right? But I'm here today to talk about uh, the Walk of Fame, y'all need to support that. Y'all should support that because it's a, it's a great cause. We have a lot of entertainers in this city. My father was a good entertainer with the hands. He not a fault good. He not a fight real, real good. So y'all need to support this. Y'all is important. I looked up uh, Andrew J. Brady. He came in the mid thirties here in the Cincinnati. He taught at Rothenberg School. I went to Rothenberg Elementary too. So I didn't know that, did a little homework. But as I was reading along, Patricia, P Patricia Brady, sister quoted, <clears throat> he, was a not, he was not a proud man. That's what she quoted. He was a, a very simple and an honor. He was a very simple man. And he said, the honor shall go to others. This honor should go to others, helping the community, black communities, because I don't got nothing on the banks, <laughs> nothing at all. Got Andrew Brady Center down there looking good, Denise, looking good down there, real nice. So we just hoping that y'all pass this, y'all, so y'all can come down there and, and take a visit too and see the great history we got. Is that cool? I love y'all, nothing y'all can do about, oh no, it's 30 seconds, y'all crazy. I'm taking these 30 seconds. <laughs> but don't forget y'all, vote for me. If you vote for me, I'm making change in City Hall because I'm tired of them down there playing. I seen the lawsuit. That's in the newspaper. How many county about to sue the city for taking income tax? People working at home. Y'all need to give them. I'm not for sale either. <laughs> Bribies, I don't take bribes either. All right? all right. I'm legit 100. We got NWACP in the back. How you doing, sir? Joe Mallory. Yeah, got like two seconds. Love y'all. Nothing y'all can do about it. All right. Thank you so much. Um, and I just wish that more people would come down and speak out about what their issues are. It is great to see this crowd here. And I'm just hoping that every time we have a meeting, we can have a crowd like this. That would be great. So we have next uh, Jasmine Colston. My name is Jasmine Coaston. I am Senior Director of Community Engagement with the Urban League of Greater Southwestern Ohio. I'm here to speak in favor of the Black Music Walk of Fame as a Black Cincinnatian 
and on behalf of President Eddie Cohen. As we all know, representation matters. It is integral to expressing value, normalcy, and affirmation of one's identity. And in this case, the accomplishments of black artists from this area. We are a society who loves celebrities. We find reasons at least once a quarter to honor those who make us laugh, cry, and bring a sense of acceptance and nostalgia through their art. As integral as black music is to American culture, many of those celebrities are black, but have been excluded from icon status and icon recognition. This Walk of Fame will provide the Queen City with the type of Black iconography that not only highlights what has already been done, but will encourage those that are dreaming of doing. It is necessary to celebrate our homegrown Black talent collectively and openly if we are truly aiming to be the equitable county we aspire to be. With racism being declared a public health crisis in our city and county, we must provide those who have been historically excluded with opportunities and invitations to be included in the present and future. I am excited for this to be a new way to tell our story right here on the banks and for generations to come to be able to bear witness to the black excellence that has come from this county. We thank Commissioner Reese for her work on this and stand in full support of this initiative. Thank you. Thank you. We have Armin Powell. Oh, no notes. How's everybody doing? Y'all look at, look at the three, okay. My name is Brother Powell. I was at the house man in my own business. I had, I always listen to the buzz. It's funny, Lincoln wears in the back. Alicia Reese called in, I'm just listening here, no there. And she brought up an idea that she had for the Black Walk of Fame. And I thought to myself, this is a true story. Google right now, ladies and gentlemen, when did James Brown movie come out? It was 2017. I was 43 years old, y'all. I went to the show. That was a Caucasian man that was looking for James Brown with a car. James Brown was hot. And he's like, oh, they're trying to take me to jail. But the man was from a radio station production from Cincinnati. And when he, he did it, I said to myself, Cincinnati? I'm 43 years old and we didn't know that James Brown produced the same song that everybody's singing in Cincinnati? That's a shame. That doesn't even make any sense. So I heard Alicia Reese on the radio, Lincoln West start asking questions. She's like, you know what? Let's start naming them, y'all, just in case y'all do not know. L.A. Reed, the Callaways, the Deal. Everybody know the Isley Brothers. We don't have nothing to celebrate these people. I looked at TV One and saw Mr. Callaway on there with a ring bigger than this microphone in front of me and a watch. And what do they all say about Cincinnati? What's the first thing y'all think of when y'all think of Cincinnati? Chili, come on, I'm gonna help y'all. The zoo, the Reds, the Bengals here, no there. You never think about none of us. It's so funny to hear Brother Pryor say that because that's a true sport in play. You'll never think about the people that, that in that our city had produced and wrote songs. Bishop Hilton is right there. I start hearing people talk, calling in and talk about James Cleveland. I didn't, who is these people? The blind men from right here, Lincoln Heights Baptist. I was like, wow, I couldn't, who knows this stuff? So this is something we really do need, y'all three. And when you run, all you gotta do is walk down there and say, guess what? We was a part of building this. This is phenomenal. This is a great idea. Y'all wanna know how Atlanta got there? Entertainment. We got a ton right here. A great idea. I walked through the rain, caught the bus, just to tell y'all, I support what Alicia Reese is doing. Have a great day, y'all. Thank you so much. You're and so much. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know I'm gonna get you later. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, just to let the audience know that all three of us are in support of that. And of course, uh, uh, Vice President Reese did uh, introduce that to all of us and we see it as a great opportunity I have about three or four relatives that are nationally known uh, for music, and I'm hoping that they will also be in there from Cincinnati. Uh, but we're all three uh, supportive of that. Um, and so next, um, Joe Mallory. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Madam President, Madam Vice President, Commissioner Driehaus. Um, I'm Joe Mallory, Cincinnati, NLACP president, and I come here to speak in support for the uh, Black Music Walk of Fame. And as we talk about uh, expending funds, taxpayers' funds uh, for projects and uh, for different infrastructure improvements, and this being a special project with this music venue, uh, you can't talk about music without including Black people. And this isn't uh, Black about just Black history, this is history. You know, they just happen to be black. 
And these were performers who, you know, have uh, done big things and known worldwide. And we need to have something where uh, blacks can see that they are represented too. That we're not just being uh, using rhetoric and being performative, but we are being intentional and we're being inclusive. So we can see that they see us. So I'm speaking in support of the walk in fame. Uh, also, I want to talk about, you have something I, can, I think is by lead number two, is the Public Defenders Commission. Uh, there's an appointment that is up and I've been pushing for several years and there may be some great people on there. But as we talk about the clients who are represented by the Public Defender's Office and the majority of the clients look like me, they are black, people who are represented by the Public Defender's Office. And there's not one black on the Public Defender's Commission. And I'm not saying that they can't be fair. I'm just saying that you have to have a cultural competent lens. It has to be a racial lens and a perspective that nobody on that commission has right now. And that's why I am pushing that we have an African-American placed on the Public Defender's Commission. I hope that that is what's gonna happen today, that the, the name that was submitted will go forth and it will be pointed to the commission so it can be truly inclusive. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And those are the last um, names I have on the card, but there are some people on Zoom uh, that uh, want to make some comments. And if you're on Zoom, you just raise your hand, we will acknowledge you and you can make your comment, your two minute comment. So we have several people on there, but uh, no one is raising their hand. Okay, we'll wait a minute because it, can be a little confusing sometimes. And I apologize for those that are here for the public hearing. Uh, we will move to that. We're a little bit uh, over by 15 minutes, but we will move, move to that in a minute. Nobody? Okay, so maybe they're just listening. Okay, so what we will do right now is open. Well, we actually need to have comments from the, the commission first. We could go straight to the public hearing. Yeah. Are you, you all right with going to the public hearing? Since so we're 15 minutes over. No, we're we're going by the agenda. Yeah, so we have. Uh, I'd like to go with. Um, Madam President, I I thought on the agenda um, during the our by leaves would go to um, would would deal with the ARA mm -hmm. budget. I'd like to move forward with that first. Mm -hmm. We have several people that spoke on that already. Mm -hmm. We've got a public hearing at 115. Yeah, we're 15 we minutes. Can, yeah. Whatever you, you guys decide. I'm, so I, rather I'm, than, so the next item on our agenda is that each one of us have a comments to make. And so, um, yeah, so um, we can go on and, what were you saying? I'll skip our comments. We can do that. Uh -huh. until we put all of us okay, but Jeff is part of the comments. Well, too. I was going to say, Madam President, if you'd like, I can, we, if we just want to advance that one item yeah, right why don't now, we just can advance, advance that, that item that and, one. and then, yeah. And then okay. we'll move forward on the public hearing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam President and Commissioners. Uh, so this would be advancing uh, by leave item number three. Uh, in your packet, this relates to, uh, in your packet, it's entitled Resolution Authorizing the Hamilton County Administrator to take all necessary steps to implement programs consistent with the Hamilton County's American Rescue Act plan. Uh, as the board is aware, the uh, county is in receipt of $158.7 million in federal uh, relief related to uh, the COVID-19 public health emergency. These funds will be received in two tranches uh, from the federal government. Uh, we've already received that first tranche um, and the second tranche will be received uh, next year. Uh, these funds have to be used for purposes of responding to uh, the public health emergency, responding uh, to uh, economic impacts related to COVID-19 uh, for the provision of government services due to the extent of revenue reduction to make necessary improvements in water, sewer, broadband infrastructure, et cetera. As the board is aware, we conducted um, uh, significant stakeholder outreach uh, on this particular uh, program. The administration developed a concept plan for the board's consideration. Uh, the concept plan was uh, discussed and was uh, uh, came to the board, received additional pub, uh, uh, insight from, from the board. There were then public hearings held um, and ultimately resulted in the development of an implementation plan for the board. 
um, with, which would describe how exactly we'd be moving forward with these dollars. So um, for the public at home, I want to just walk through uh, the implementation plan at a high level here. Uh, it is broken down into bins. Uh, we have uh, bins focusing on strengthening the public health systems, uh, addressing things like emergent needs and making sure that we have um, uh, that we are better set up from a community resiliency perspective moving forward, that we address issues related to mental health, services to disproportionately impacted communities, uh, items such as assisting the county and the city with relocation of the uh, gun range in Evendale, um, uh, acquiring and operating and promoting uh, the 513 relief bus or what we've called the mobile tech bus to get community outreach and health outreach out into the community. Uh, we have a category for strengthening county finances, uh, which would include revenue replacement. I'll get back to that in a second. Uh, capital improvements and uh, a, uh, a satellite office that would help us get outreach out into the community. Premium pay for, uh, for employees, county staffing, and as well as emergency management operations. Uh, we have a category for addressing negative, negative impacts, including housing, production, preservation, protection, as well as mortgage assistance workforce development, nonprofit assistance, small business assistance grants, and assistance to various industries, such as the hospitality and arts and culture sector. Uh, we also have a category for enhancing community infrastructure, including broadband and sewer and stormwater. Uh, we also, as it relates to that revenue replacement category, uh, we will be funding various uh, pay-as-you-go capital projects. Uh, the first of these was the subject of some uh, public comment earlier. That is the build out of Banks Lot 28, inclusive of a Black Music Walk of Fame installation uh, on Lot 28. Uh, we have a consolidated EMA 911 facility uh, and a contingency as well. All told, we have a contingency in that category of $6 million. We also have close to $13 million in contingency um, in the broader program as we get feedback from Treasury on other allowable uses. We have questions into the Department of Treasury on things like uh, the use of these dollars for uh, property tax relief, uh, for use towards debt service, um, and a few other questions that we have as well that we have some flexibility built in for the board. So with that, just wanted to make sure we had a high level overview. Uh, the administration recommends approval of the plan. Happy to answer any questions from the board. Thank you, Jeff. And also all of this information, all the numbers, all the, all the categories are on our website. So if you'd like to take a look at it, you <laughs> certainly would like for you to do that. And give us any suggestions that you may have. Um, so that being said, I'd open it up for any discussion by my colleagues, uh, Vice President Reese. Thank you, uh, Madam President. And let me start off by saying I wanna thank uh, Jeff and the administration um, working hard with us on this. I want to thank uh, my board colleagues, you, Madam President, as uh, well as uh, Commissioner Driehaus. And I want to just indicate one of the things that the process, uh, uh, you talked a lot about the process, and I just want to reiterate that, that the process that we use where we could have input from the people first before we put our input in. And a lot of the input that came from the taxpayers is in here. Um, I want to highlight just a few things. One, we heard a lot about mental health and teen suicide. And uh, that was put in here. That's in the bucket uh, where we have money for mental health and uh, also teen suicide prevention. I want to mention that broadband, we know Wi-Fi and broadband is very, very important. It's even more important now. We saw with COVID. Uh, and I want to acknowledge uh, that came in um, a little later. I want to thank them for coming in. We have Mayor Ruby Kenzie Mumphrey uh, from Lincoln Heights, uh, Councilwoman Linda Childs Jeter from Lincoln Heights, and uh, also the village manager of Lincoln Heights, Joyce Powdrell who's also been working with us on Wi-Fi and broadband. So I'm excited to see us be able to expand that throughout Hamilton County. Also, um, the gun range is on here. I know they're concerned about that, uh, as we are concerned as well about finally, hopefully, uh, closing that down and uh, moving it somewhere else. So we have money that we've put in to that. We're certainly hopeful that the city of Cincinnati will also put some money toward this so we can get this done and our children don't have to hear these gunshots anymore. Um, Want to also highlight in here the 513 relief bus uh, and that has rolled out. We started with uh, 
a, a mobile uh, prototype and it's been going out and it's not just taking the vaccine, but also taking financial assistance to people. And so we're gonna continue that in a more permanent way. That is in here also. And then um, last but not least, there's a lot of other things in here, workforce and small business grants, help with the restaurants and hospitality industry, uh, continue help with arts and culture. And let me say that our job, Washington, Joe Biden, President Joe Biden and uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, they did their job. They have brought money to us. Now it's our job to get the money to the people. And that's what we're doing with this plan that we're putting forward today. Affordable housing, we went from just talking about it and we put $40 million toward it. And with 5 million to help people with mortgage assistance right now, too many people are hanging on by a shoestring with their homes. $5 million immediately, we'll be able to help you hang on to your house and pay your utilities. Um, as um, Jeff mentioned, I asked a lot about the property taxes. We're waiting to hear back, but we are not just waiting. We put some money away in case we get news that we can help. So for those who are asking about that, uh, we're looking into that. MSD and getting your sewer bills reduced, we're also looking into that. So I wanted that to be acknowledged. And then also rental assistance, you may not see this in here. I keep saying this because I don't want people to think we don't care about rental assistance. We have almost $20 million outside of this that's currently available today, helping with rental assistance. And we're on the ground trying to get that. No one should be thrown out of their home with the money that we have available. Lastly, the Black Music Walk of Fame. Um, we have several people that have testified. There's been diverse people. I wanna thank the symphony, CEO of the symphony, Jonathan Martin, uh, Katie Blackburn with the Bengals, uh, as well as uh, Mimi that also stood with us and the music ambassadors, Boosie Collins' wife, Otis Williams and his son. Otis Williams wrote the doo-wop for King Records the doo-wop sound. And when we were on the banks one day, he pointed to the icon and he's getting older. He says, can't we be included? And so that's kind of how it started. Uh, and Lincoln Ware, uh, who has been in music for many, many years, uh, that's how it all began. But today I do want to acknowledge um, someone who I wish was with me, but is not with me today, but with me in spirit, Madam President, my mother, Barbara Howard Reese. And she started in music. So when people say, what does she know about music? She started and she recorded here in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, my father's record label. Uh, that's how they met. They met music. And maybe if they didn't meet, meet with music, I wouldn't be here today. So music is powerful. And uh, that's how come I've met a lot of musicians and a lot of folks here. And uh, I'm excited about what we're going to be doing. Uh, it's going to look like the Hollywood Walk of Fame. People are going to come from all over the world. And for the first time, we will have a music corridor on the banks connecting the Paul Brown Stadium, home of the Cincinnati Music Festival, which brings in $107 million in economic impact for us. So it's about making money. Uh, and next to the Andrew Brady Icon Music. So we will be bringing tours from all over. And we are excited um, that we will be honoring uh, Mr. Otis Williams, which we already approved, Bootsy Collins, the Isley Brothers, uh, as well as the late, great Dr. Charles Fode as our founding inductee. So just wanted to say that it's just, I, uh, Madam President gets excited and then I get excited and we're like, oh, this good news. It's just so much good news. This is some uh, fantastic news. And I just wanted to say that all of that is in here in an inclusive way for Hamilton County. So I'm, um, um, Honored to uh, vote in support of this, Madam President. And um, this is my first, I guess, budget vote. So I'm excited about it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I too want to recognize all the work that uh, staff put into bringing this forward to us. Um, the process was very inclusive. We had public hearings. We had internal and external stakeholders weigh in so that we could get this right. Um, you know, we had the CARES Act last year. It, we were in a very different position pushing down relief to folks that live in this community. And our deadline was the end of the year. So we didn't have the opportunity to do this kind of holistic look at um, how we can spend these federal dollars that are you know, important to uh, the immediate relief that's needed in the community and some transformational things that we are able to do uh, with these dollars. It's a once in a career 
opportunity, and I, I, it is not lost on me, and I know it's not lost on you, that we don't often get this kind of windfall, and we need to be very careful, and we need to be transparent and very deliberative about how we spend these dollars. Um, and so without belaboring the point, uh, we've got really two different buckets. We've got the short-term immediate need. People are still struggling. How do we provide mortgage assistance, rent assistance, small business assistance, nonprofit assistance to those that are still struggling out there, and also reserve enough of these dollars to make sure that we can do some transformational things. Um, and so housing is the one thing that if you were to look at this plan, um, $40 million towards the need for housing in this community, whether it's affordable housing, housing for people with special needs, uh, housing for people that are transitioning back to the community uh, with mental health or addiction issues. We are, intend to cover that territory with these dollars and set up a panel to help inform our decisions related to housing. So um, it's a great opportunity. I too was gonna highlight the broadband work that we're doing on some of the infrastructure that we're doing, uh, which will create jobs for the community. So it is a proud moment. I'm very excited about the plan. I, I'm glad that it was a very inclusive plan where we heard from many, many people. I think we had 50 people testify at our public hearings uh, and they all weighed in and we listened to them and the plan reflects what we heard from those folks out in the community. So I too am poised and very excited about passing our version of the American Rescue Plan. Thank you. Thank you, absolutely. Um, just a couple words. Uh, we know, as you were saying, this money doesn't come very often. And we knew that we had to be responsible. We had to be accountable for the money that the people are supposed to do uh, to have. We actually literally thought about what areas need help. And we just start throwing out things, um, brainstorming, looking at who needed the most help. I know there was one area, um, the veterans. And I didn't see a lot in there for veterans. So I kind of threw that out also that we need to remember the veterans. So we all looked at the pockets uh, that needed assistance. And I'm just very proud of the fact that I have, I believe we have included everyone. Uh, Jeff is a little modest uh, because uh, it was announced in a state meeting that the Hamilton County uh, plan and strategic plan to use this money is the best in the state. Uh, the way we did it, the way we included people, the way we brainstormed, the way we had the public hearing. So Jeff, I wanna thank uh, you and your staff for that. Uh, the way um, this sort of goes as it relates to our commission, just for those who don't know, someone brings up an initiative and then they bring it to all of our offices and then we jump on board with it or we ask questions or whatever. Uh, it has to be at least two people that agree on it. And so far, all these new initiatives, new minds, brain, you know, creative, where we come from, our background, we bring up things that others uh, possibly have not thought of, and then we buy into it. Uh, so this is, as we were saying earlier, the whole board buys into this. And, and sometimes we don't. And sometimes we have more discussion um, uh, about it to make sure we all feel good about it. This is definitely a people's plan. And said, so, well, these are people, of course, but it's not about things. And we know infrastructure is important, but we're trying to uh, bring people back to wholeness and even the ones that were not whole to bring them up from somewhere, uh, especially with this COVID, we know how it in impacted us, some greater or less than others, but trying to bring people where they can feel like they have a future and there's some hope. Uh, the women are getting it done along with, no. A couple men. <laughs> um, so, um, and, and I'll just have to go back to Jeff again because he not only heard us, his staff not only heard us, but they listened to us. So I'm just so proud also not to belabor this, that this is a great plan. So. President, yes. I forgot to mention, and I, I'm sorry I did. Mm -hmm. We also, we have good partnerships mm -hmm. and I just want to make sure I highlight Proctor and Gamble, uh, who has come on as a partner with the Black Music Walk of Fame, not just in, in you know, name only, but also helping to fund it. So we do leverage our dollars, like you said, to get public-private partnerships. So I, I didn't want to leave them out. Yeah, we Thank don't you. Want to leave them out. Sure. So we may have to ask again. Huh? So with all that being said, I'd like to make a motion to adopt by leave three. Second. Mr. Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you so much. So we're gonna move forward with our uh, public hearing at this time.
Um, and we have a few people from the township that are here. Okay. Are you Frank? <clears throat> no, I'm Brian Snyder. I know a, you are. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're going to speak first for the, okay. Yes, I was okay. um, going to present the case sure. um, as we and typically we'll do. And then we'll talk Green Township. Okay, very good. If that works for you? That'll work. All right, perfect. Um, so this is a zone change hearing for case Green 2021-02, um, Trailside Village. This is, um, you can see the current zoning map on the um, screen here. Um, uh, majority of the property is zoned EE planned retail currently as part of a previous um, development that was not constructed. Um, and then the balance of the property is zoned either double O or B um, and a little bit of A2 residence. Um, those are all residential districts. So if this. <clears throat> Isn't working. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> It's our first time to doing this, I think. It's been a while. Um, <clears throat> so this is the proposal for the property. The property is mostly currently vacant, um, except for, for some uses up on Harrison Avenue. Um, this project would include some planned retail um, portions that would include mixed use apartments and um, commercial uses in uh, four to five story buildings along Harrison Avenue. Those are in the pink um, to the right of the plan. Um, it would also include some um, some single family row house um, development along the existing uh, Green Township bike trail. And that is all of the blue lots that are shown um, kind of going north south on the site plan. Um, there is an existing um, significant creek that runs through the property. It would run below and behind the, um, the blue lots on that property. That would be the part that would be zoned um, double D planned multifamily. Um, and then <clears throat> there's a significant riparian buffer that would be um, protected along that creek and along all the other creeks in the um, development. And on the other side of the creek would be a single family planned unit development portion of this request. Um, just some pictures of the property. This is looking from Harrison Avenue where the um, road, main road would come out onto Harrison Avenue. Um, this is a picture of the existing trail at the end of Lee Court. Um, this is the bike trail that um, Green Township constructed. <clears throat> Um, and then this is a picture from Hutchinson Road where the single family street would come into the development from Hutchinson. So there would be two ways in and out of the development. Um, this is a zone plat. I, this is a kind of a boring document. I don't typically show this. Um, this is a very complicated request though. So I'm gonna go through this. Um, <clears throat> so what you have here is the double E along the street that's not colored, it says zone double E. Um, they're requesting that the previous um, resolution for the previous double E case be replaced with a new one by this commission to reflect the new development. Um, the portion that is kind of orange in the middle would be zoned multifamily. Um, this would allow the reduced setbacks to allow the, the townhouse uh, row home portion of the development. And then everything else would be rezoned to B residents uh, with a planned unit development overlay. The planned unit development overlay is a, an administrative approval that the Zoning Commission granted um, at their meeting um, in May, um, pending the outcome of this meeting. Um, it does require this commission to rezone the property to B residents so that they can have the planned unit development applied to the property. Um, and then there is a little portion of um, A2 zoning in the top left that would be rezoned to B and a small portion of B zoning that would be rezoned to um, DD in the lower right-hand corner. And <clears throat> so what's, be, what's before you today are all the zone change parts of the request, um, the double E part, the double D part, and the parts that would go from A2 to B and from B to double D. Um, the PUD portion of the request is not before you. So the PUD conditions that were approved by the Zoning Commission um, are not before you today as part of this hearing, um, but they are uh, they were approved by the Zoning Commission pending the outcome of this um, hearing. So if you don't approve the B residents, the PUD doesn't apply, basically. Um, so <clears throat> that is a fairly complicated request. I, one of the more complicated requests I've ever presented to the board. Um, this is the previous plan for the property legacy place. This was what was rezoned um, EE in 2006. Um, it was intended to be a large scale commercial kind of mall development, similar to Rickwood, I believe. Um, this called for the kind of channelization and rerouting of the entire stream as it crossed the property. Um, it did not go forward and has not been constructed, but that was approved by the commission in 2006, and that is the actual um, governing plan for the property currently. 
for that portion of the property that's zone double E. Um, <clears throat> so the um, Regional Planning Commission has an adopted land use plan for Green Township. The Green Township trustees have an adopted land use plan that they had requested the Planning Commission to adopt. This is it. Um, it shows that the majority of the property was intended for retail use. They showed a green, uh, green space buffer along the creek and then some transitional residents on the other side of the creek. Um, staff found that it was that this proposal was consistent with that plan. The Regional Planning Commission also unanimously found that the um, proposed use was consistent with the comprehensive plan. <clears throat> So <clears throat> I'll go through the, the actual plan for the sections um, that are before you today. This is the double E section that would be along Harrison Avenue. Harrison Avenue is the, the large road to the right. Um, the front building would be the mixed use with retail on the first floor and apartments above. Um, the building behind it would be apartments. Um, as I said, those are both four to five stories. And then there are some other ancillary um, commercial uses in the three other buildings surrounding this. This would be the part of the property that would remain double E, but you would be replacing the current resolution for Legacy Place with a new resolution that was specific to this development. Um, and then this is the other portion of the property that it would be rezoned double D, basically around the um, blue lots that are shown here. Um, this is majority of this property is currently zoned double E for Legacy Place, and they're requesting it be rezoned double D multifamily to allow for the smaller lot sizes and smaller units. Um, in this portion of the development. The Green Township Trail kind of runs to the to the right of all the blue lots um, currently. Um, and that is, I believe, the applicant's point of, of this development. Um, he can speak to that um, if you would like. Um, and then <clears throat> zooming out, there are two portions that are shown here is green space in the upper left-hand corner and the lower right-hand corner that would be the subject of the single letter zone change requests that are before you from A2 to B residents and from B residents to double D plan multifamily. Um, but there's no portion of the development that's actually on those um, sections of the plan. Those are all green space. Um, so this proposal um, includes a total of 124 acres um, altogether. That's what this plan encompasses. Um, of the 124 acres, 57 acres are maintained as permanent open space. Um, most of them related to the creeks and streams that bisect the property. Um, there are trails being proposed through those areas. Uh, the majority of that, again, is in the PUD portion. It's not before this, this body, but some of it is in the double D um, and the double E sections um, as well. Um, this is one of the, the more um, open space conscious plans that we've ever seen. Um, the, the riparian buffers are being, um, are being maintained along all the creeks that go through the property, even the ones that are tributary to the main stream that runs through the site. Um, <clears throat> so staff reviewed this and recommended approval of the request. Um, this did go before a staff review conference where we had a, a meeting with the public that we have before the um, plan is presented officially. Um, there were um, numerous residents attended that Zoom meeting. There were about 30 people online. We had about 13 different speakers. Um, the township and the applicant held a separate open house after that meeting um, to allow for all the residents that spoke and that were concerned with the development to come in and talk to the developer and um, get more information. Um, then <clears throat> we did have um, staff's recommendation of approval. There was a regional planning commission public meeting that was held on May 6th. Uh, the Regional Planning Commission voted unanimously, unanimously to recommend approval of the development. Um, the Township Trustees did hold a, a public meeting also um, after the Planning Commission meeting where the Township Trustees unanimously recommended approval of the development. Um, and then this, the, there was a notified public hearing with the Hamilton County Rural Zoning Commission on May 20th. Um, and the Zoning Commission unanimously recommended approval of the development. And so it is before you today with uh, unanimous votes from the Township Trustees, the Regional Planning Commission and the Rural Zoning Commission. Um, so that is the zone change part of the request. There are conditions that were re recommended by both the Township and the Zoning Commission. They are the same conditions. So the Township and Zoning Commission were on the same page with um, all the recommendations. So <clears throat> with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much for your summary. Um, Brian, you had said way at the beginning about uh, zone double E. I heard you mention something about the county paying a portion of that. No. You said something about the county paying something. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, paying? Yeah. No, I, I didn't say okay, paying. So I'm not sure what I said, but I, I okay. certainly didn't say we were paying any money for anything. <laughs> no, no, we're not paying for any of this. Okay, so, um, well, so, and then you indicated there was some open acreage, 57. 
paper. Yes. She did say that, right? Yes. And so is that unusual that they have so much open um, acreage? It's more than we would generally see on a project this size, yes. I don't have any additional questions. So Vice President Briggs. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I'll tell you, it's a lot going on in Green Township. <laughs> it's my dad's neck of the woods. You guys got it going on. This is not the, I know we have a Menard project and this is not that, right? Is this the Menard project? I don't, I'm not sure. Okay, if you don't know, it's not, okay. Yeah. My question though, there was some, I, I received something in my office regarding, um, I think a trail or some safety, a safety issue. Sure. Can you elaborate on that? Has that been resolved? So there's a Green Township trail that runs through the property and there is a, a road that would cross that. So you kind of see res, right, right to the right of all the blue lots where the main road comes down from Harrison and goes into the residential part of it. And then running north south is the existing Green Township bike trail. There has been some, um, there have been some comments that we've received through the process about that crossing potentially being um, potentially being dangerous. Obviously the Green Township trustees and the Hamilton County engineer will be involved in reviewing that crossing with the, both the public road that would cross it and the Green Township trail that is existing in there. Um, in between the two of them, I'm confident that they'll work out all the safety issues to make that a safe crossing. Um, just a follow up to that. Um, and I don't know, I don't think we're voting on this today, but I would like to know that that has been resolved. I wouldn't want to vote on something and then say, we are confident it's going to be safe down the road. I need to, you know, and they may be able to answer that when they when they come up. Sure. But that's that's the that's the main thing that I got from my office was that issue and the issue of obviously, you know, cutting down some of the green space. Was do you have anything on that or? Um, like I said, this this project, um, or I'm sorry, this property was part of a large project where the entire site was going to be cut down and graded out, and the creek was going to be buried, and there was going to be a mall built on this site. Um, and this this project doesn't do any of that. It mm -hmm. respects all of the streams and all of the, the existing green space along, you know, for like 150 feet on either side of the main stream, um, they're not gonna grade or remove any vegetation. So this is more conscious of the green space than in typical projects that we've seen and even the one that was approved previously for this exact site. Thank you. Thank you for that clarity. Thank you. Commissioner Grehal. Yes, so I Madam Commissioner, thank you. I'm, I'm gonna reserve my comments until we hear from the township. And I don't know if we're going to also hear from the developer related to this, but uh, I, we've all gotten communications related to some of the safety concerns, the green space concerns. Um, but I'm anxious to hear about how the process went in the township. And also, Brian, um, in the reserve, I know there were some concessions made uh, through as the process went forward. And I, and I know you referred to those um, as not really before us, but I'm still um, interested to know what concessions were made after the public was heard at some of the public hearings? <clears throat> okay, so um, yes, the, the developer could probably address that because a lot of those public uh, meetings, the, they went back and made changes to the plan. That's one of the reasons that we hold those initial public meetings before we get started in the official process is to allow that to occur, so. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And so I know we have some people from the public here to speak. I'd like for the township representatives to come up first so you can get all the information from them and we certainly will get with you. So Frank Birkenhauer. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, just We uh, are pretty excited about this economic development project in Green Township and what it will bring to Hamilton County and Green Township. We have not, nothing like this right now and it's very similar to what you see at Summit Park and Liberty Center and some other things. It's, it's a lot smaller than Liberty Center it's one of the first times I've been involved in my career in a downgrade in zoning where you're going from intense retail down to really uh, a huge amount of green space. And, and just to put this into perspective, we're uh, working with the developer. We have about 35 acres that the township owns, and we're going to leverage that 35 acres into 55 acres of green space. So we're increasing our green space in the township that we own by uh, over 50%. And then in turn, we're going to put a... Uh, restriction on that, that it'll be park land and green space uh, for perpetuity. So we're going to be able to preserve that. And uh, just to put this into perspective, the total open space reserved west of the township trail is larger than the area that will be developed into single family homes. Mm -hmm. And that's so unusual when you think that this was a big box retail zoning before then. And as far as the crossing goes, I'm a mountain bike guy, so I don't really cross the road when I'm biking, but I have a lot of friends that do so. My sister's uh, president of the Cincinnati Off-Road Alliance, and, and a lot of mountain bikers are also road bikers. So I 
we, we have Wasson Way crosses Madison uh, Road, Great Miami, Little Miami Trail up in Dayton, it crosses state highways, the Shaker Trail at Miami Whitewater, it crosses Atherton, Bauman and Oxford Road, which is a really fast country road. The average daily traffic count on this township subdivision street is a fraction of what these other crossings are. And we are going to go above and beyond in terms of rumble strips, flashing lights, everything. So that safety issue really is a non-issue. Um, I was taking my my little ones at uh, Hilton Head and uh, we're, we're crossing the, the road at Hilton Head and everything. And uh, I, I think we're gonna have better uh, crossing than a lot of these you'll see. So I, I really am confident we were gonna address that to your satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, next, we have uh, Trifon Callis. Did I pronounce that right? Yes, you okay. Thank you, Madam President, Madam Vice President, and Commissioner Driehaus. I want to just briefly address the board here on two things, and that's the project and the actual process that went into this project. Could you uh, just, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't say who you were. So, oh, it was I will mention, I'm Triffin Callis, I'm the chairman of the Green Township Board of Trustees. So I wanted to address the project and the process to this board briefly today. In my seven and a half years as a trustee, there is more excitement about this project for our community than any project that we have seen. And as um, Vice President Reese noted, there has been a lot of activity over the years in Green Township. But we really feel that this will be a game changer for our community. When you talk about quality of life, walkability, connectivity, residential housing, apartments, and green space. As Administrator Birkenhauer mentioned, the amount of green space in this project is unlike any other that we've seen. And I think that's a really important piece of the equation uh, with this project. But also the process. The process is so very important. If you look at the process here, and as each of you know, we are a large community, over 60,000 residents. We have had five now, five hearings on the matter. We had an open house with near 100 residents. And what stands out to me about the process in this project, commissioners, is that the, the developer and our staff have met with individually anyone who had a concern in our community. Again, a community of over 60,000 residents, anyone with a concern has spoken with or met in person with the developer or our team. And I think that's a very important piece to highlight to you today. But between the Regional Planning Commission, the Zoning Commission, the Green Township Board of Trustees, our open house, and the final step in front of you, the commissioners, it has, as Mr. Schneider mentioned, received unanimous approval, but not just unanimous approval, the fact that the residents have been heard, a process has occurred, numerous public hearings, I think is what um, separates from a process standpoint, this project from any other project of this volume, I would say in the region. It's been very transparent. It's, it's gone on for many months. We've taken safety protocols into play and, and had hearings spaced out. So we as a community, we as a board, myself representing my colleagues and I are very excited. We appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today for all of your leadership through the pandemic and um, hopefully your support on this project. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay, we will move forward. Um, Roland Johnson from Trailside Village. Commissioners, mm -hmm. I'm Roland Johnson, Green Township resident and serve on the boards of both Cardinal Land Conservancy and the Hillside Trust. Today, you're being asked to approve zone changes to permit, under, uh, permit up to 300 homes and businesses to be built on 124 wooded acres on one of, and I quote, the last relatively undisturbed headwater stream habitats in Hamilton County, according to the Ohio EPA. This development plan has been recognized by the RPC staff as a conservation development. That shows the enlightened practice of reserving substantial natural space for the benefit of the residents as well as the general public. The plan identifies areas to protect, including Wesselman Creek's riparian corridors and tributary streams. The plan delineates those areas to be graded for housing and roads, and those spared from grading, such as streams, stream slopes, and wooded areas that will be deeded to Green Township as a park. This is commendable 
The natural areas will be assessed as accessible to the general public and the users of the existing township trail may wander through the entire public area. But the plan violates conservation principles. While the streams are technically not touched, the protective wooded stream side slopes will be cut and filled. One half mile of the northeast hillside, the blue houses, will be packed with 94 townhouses. This is the section zone DD, the footprint of which will, be, which will compromise the natural protection of the stream. We're concerned how the streams, riparian and natural areas would be protected during grading and construction. As this development moves forward, these identified conservation areas must be preserved for the general welfare of the community. If I might have maybe- Certainly. A few more seconds. We also have great concerns about the safety of the heavily used township trail at grade crossing with the proposed public trail side drive public street. Alternatives to the at grade crossing of trail and street should be considered. The deeded park areas from the developer to the township should be protected with deed restrictions to prevent future development and subdivision. We have this understanding from the developer and Green Township. In fact, we concerned citizens have been invited by the developer to participate in the planning of the natural stream and trail areas. We look forward to that. Mature woods and stream systems on this exceptional area are an extraordinary gift to Green Township. You have the power to preserve the integrity of this plan with conditions that protect the natural benefits. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I had a feeling you were going to go a little over, but I, I have a little concern because when the trustees were speaking, there was no timer. And so we either have to give them two and give you two. So we'll, we'll talk about that later. I know Jackie's doing what she needs to do, Jackie. I'm looking. But uh, so you did exactly. I'm about but to rehearse this for two minutes. That's okay. So everybody will get two or somebody will get a minute more. I don't know, but we'll deal with that later. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. So don't try to come up here going over whoever's coming up next. Uh, <laughs> let's say um, Dale Mahuta. Okay. Can you guys have a communication from um, Roland Johnson in front of you and uh -huh. and Dale? Hold on one second. Uh huh. Roland Johnson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's another for the, J the Dale present presented I just earlier. Gave you a copy okay. Of, of exactly what I have here. Sure. Thank you. And I'll probably like uh, try to make it as brief as I can and maybe yeah, not even want, read all. We of really it. want two minutes, but. Uh, no, it's yeah. okay. I, I, I practice too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, my name's Dale Mahuda, 5793 Fieldview Circle. Uh, and the back of my property is uh, on this trail. Um, this is called who's in the who's in that park I walk on the Harrison trail every day I've met all kinds of patrons to the park which include elderly couples I'm just going to read the ones that are culpable mm -hmm. wheelchair people with motorized and manual chairs women and men pushing strollers parents teaching their children how to ride bicycles and smart trikes elementary school children in class groups from uh, Oakdale children on skateboards scooters and hoverboards inline skaters handicapped people with walking devices Green Township created a linear park about two years ago that is a little less than a mile long with ODOT that has become extremely popular. There are some amenities that are important here, the safety and security. It's a quiet environment away from cars, traffic and pollution. It's a semi-rural environment with appealing surroundings, a 12 foot wide bed with only a 2% grade. Um, Green Township um, built or is going to do a phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. And there's going to be a, around 200 homes involved in this project. And uh, there, there's also a, a road is planned from Harrison Avenue to service the plan and will become public byway from Harrison to Hutchinson Road via Trailside Drive and Irwin Street. And I do believe that uh, that's going to be, they're underestimating the traffic that's going to happen here because there are going to be people that are going to take a shortcut over to Hutchinson via this method since it's a public street. Many of the park patrons will have some difficulty crossing the intersection, even with mitigation. I think it's unacceptable. The park patrons listed uh, have a reasonable expectation of safety and a little risk in a, in a green town um, uh, township park. I used to be an airline pilot and I taught airline pilots 
how to evaluate risk. And one of the things we always talked about was risk is hazard plus exposure equals risk. So I'm almost done. If you can eliminate the hazard, you have low risk. If you can eliminate the exposure, you have low risk. If the hazard increases and you cannot avoid the exposure, then the risk increases sometimes dramatically. And we don't know anything about this intersection. The Harrison Trail patrons are, are in the park to recreate. Why would you expose them to such, uh, uh, such an unnecessary risk? I would propose an over-under um, arrangement to reduce the risk to almost zero. And I've included some pictures to show you um, mm -hmm. this one here that's in the Miami Whitewater and it's a prefab over under that mm -hmm. takes the trail about that size and I'm betting that it probably cost about the same that it would take to mitigate on, on, on grade that you'd probably be better off with this simply because mm -hmm. there's almost zero risk with this. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. We'll move on to uh, Sandra Hoskins. Mm -hmm. uh, the house you saw on here is mine. It butts, I butt right up to that trail. Mm -hmm. And I'm worried about the same thing Dale was about the safety because I walk up there too. Mm -hmm. It's a driveway right now. And I worry about the green space mm -hmm. because if you saw the house, I'm right there. Mm -hmm. So I just came to listen because we, this is the first open meeting that we've been invited to. We didn't know anything about the other meetings. So that's why we're down here. Mm -hmm. So I'm only a minute. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cleet Benkin. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for the time to speak. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Cleet Benkin. I am a co-applicant. Uh, I'm, a, I'm also a landscape architect and planner. I've been practicing for 30 years. As part of that practice, I have been the principal in charge for connectivity plans for cities like uh, Lexington, Kentucky, city of Fairfield, Ohio. I was the principal in charge for the master plan for Wasson Way. What the township has created is effectively the west side version of Wasson Way. Um, we believe very strongly as a, as a planning team. And by the way, my, my traffic consultant, um, Jeff from Strand Associates is here as well. Uh, we have involved transportation planners and engineers in the concepting of this plan. We will have to go before the county engineer, the Army Corps of Engineers, the Ohio EPA. We're at the beginning of this process, not at the end of this process in terms of the, the level of scrutiny and the level of expertise that will be brought to bear on the final design of this plan, we are 100% confident that an engaged approach where we're inviting the people that have legitimate concerns to be part of this solution is the right way to move this project forward. Today, we're asking you to approve the rezoning. All of that other heavy lifting is still in front of us, but it will be guided by your county administration, your county engineer. Um, the Metropolitan Sewer District. Um, we embrace the idea of working with Roland and his group on the idea of making these streams the most high quality streams on the west side. Frankly, we look to improve them because they're compromised today by sanitary sewer overflows. The property owners are going to sell this property regardless. The next developer, if we're not successful in developing this, can do what's on the current zoning. They can put in a regional shopping center. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And I don't have any other cards. Um, we're good to go. I guess there's no one on Zoom as it relates to this hearing. So, mm -hmm. okay. Um, we, have, uh, one, um, we have one person on the Zoom. Okay. His name is Nick Ferdinand. And Nick, we're going to go ahead and unmute you on our. Yeah. yeah can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. My name's Nick Ferneting, and I live at 5803 Philview, and I'm in opposition to this project, especially in terms of its size and scope. Uh, the Harrison Avenue quarter right now is already overloaded with traffic, and we got a lot of people that are detouring around, and um, something that hasn't been brought up is the other end of Harrison Avenue 
is the Western Hills Viaduct, which has fallen apart. And um, that can't even support any more traffic. And to allow this project to move forward at this time, uh, it just doesn't seem like that Harrison Avenue corridor is ready for it. Now, um, the other thing I would like to bring up is the Cincinnati Business Courier is called this project bringing urban living to the country or something like that. And um, a lot of us West Siders, we, we just don't go downtown because of the overcrowding and all that down there. And we sure don't want the overcrowding to come to us. Um, my neighbors and I, we used to have a, a quiet place up here. It was tranquil and peaceful. But quite honestly, my retirement and my kid's inheritance have been ruined by Green Township. Um, now, I'm sure they're going to try to convince you that our land is more valuable now, but some things are more important to me. And um, how can I say this? This development um, that sits in the middle of this trail, when uh, we stood before you last time, our neighborhood was unanimous in its opposition to any trail expansion. If you remember how they wanted to come up off the trail and come along Philview and then go back into that development area. Um, and the reason that we were in opposition is because we felt like we were being manipulated by a bait and switch um, nice. as the trail was tied to the Harrison Avenue widening. And so, um, um, excuse me, Nick, but if you could, sure. some, if you could. Sure, I, I'm going to wrap this up real quick. But anyway, um, the proposed trail to us was you won't see it, you won't hear it, it'll just be back there. But now I have about 250 people per day walking behind our house. Um, now, the majority of the people back there, they'll tell you that this trail is great, it's wonderful. But, you know, quite honestly, um, that's the ones that are in the parking lot. They don't live here in my neighborhood. I actually talked to uh, most of them yesterday. And if we had it to do over again, we would have fought that trail um, to the death. And now they want to drop this um, large development inside of that. And it's just that much more. Um, and I'll just cut it short there because I, I could go on and on, but I, I really have used up my time. I wanted to say thank you. Uh, also want to say congratulations to you. Um, I think you're going to be a great president of the commission. So um, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, no additional uh, comments. Um, Brian, if you want to come forward and tell us what the next steps are. I did want to mention, though, as you talked about the, the meetings that you've had in that area with the community, um, even though Ms. Hoskins indicated she didn't know about it. And that's part of the dilemma that we have here at the board to trying to make sure our marketing and messages get out. But I have no reason not to believe that all those people came to that meeting. We have to do a better better job of that. But it's really a standard that the board has set as it relates to public input. Uh, and we have stopped development and said, uh, you got to go back. There were no hearings or, you know, and so um, I'm, I'm not saying that you wouldn't do it anyway, but it's very well known that the board is expecting public input. So I really appreciate that. Brian, what, what are our next steps? Sure. <clears throat> um, if, if I could just to address mm -hmm. one of the concerns that were a couple of the concerns that were raised, there is a condition that was recommended for approval that requires all of the final plans to go back to the zoning commission through a public hearing where we'll notify all the neighbors again when the, um, when the details of the plan are finalized before the, anything can be constructed, there will be another public mm -hmm. hearing with all the neighbors um, to be, review the details of um, things like the trail crossing um, and how they're gonna handle that and the preservation of the green space during construction and um, permanent um, ways to preserve that green space. Those would all likely be conditions that will come out of the zoning commission public hearing when they consider the final zoning compliance plan. And that's one of the conditions of uh, the recommendation that's before you today. So if you adopted the rezoning commission's recommendation, it would include the provision that everybody have another chance to look at this before anything can be built. Mm -hmm. um, can, <clears throat> similarly, the planned unit development that was approved by the zoning commission contingent on the outcome of this hearing included those preservations as conditions as well. Um, the majority of the green space is in the PUD part. It's not in the zone change part that's before you today. 
um, but those conditions were included by the zoning commission that would both um, require the open space to be um, maintained permanently and would require the preservation during construction with snow fencing and other measures. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, this is a public hearing. It does require the, the board close the public hearing and request a resolution in one way or another. Um, if you did close and request a resolution, I would have that before the commission at the uh, meeting two weeks from now or the next meeting, depending on your summer schedule. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, w I had waited on my comments until we heard from mm -hmm. the, the folks that testified. Thank you all for being here. It's, it's been very helpful. Um, so a couple of things I just want to either point out or bring clarity to. So currently this is zoned in a way that it's retail. Uh, and so I, I am trying to put this in context related to this project, which admittedly by all has a lot of green space, more green space than usual. Um, so I do want to recognize that uh, the current zoning is not helpful to the preservation of green space. And so I just, uh, that's my impression from what I've heard. And then the other piece that you just mentioned was because what, what has been written and what you have already said is a lot about what's there now and the preservation of what's there now and, and how it relates to the development that's being proposed. And so did I hear you just say that the green space that is on the plan is being somehow preserved through some kind of documentation or agreement? <clears throat> so yes, the all of the green space that's that would be the single family part of the development, everything behind those blue lots that were that were on that plan previously, all of that is um, covered by conditions that were already approved by the Rural Zoning Commission for the planned unit development overlay part of the project. Um, and so similar conditions would be um, likely placed on the development as part of the Zoning Commission's consideration. Obviously, I can't say they will for sure. The Zoning Commission is a different body. They can approve conditions um, that they see fit, but our recommendation as staff would be to include the same conditions with their approval of zoning compliance plans that they did include on their PUD, their planned unit development approval that they already did. So yes, um, it's our intention to make sure that that green space um, is maintained permanently and is exactly as shown on the plans that were submitted. Um, staff will um, recommend that to the Zoning Commission. The Zoning Commission has been very good in the past about maintaining open space. If you say you're going to have a permanent open space, they really expect you to make it permanently open space. Mm -hmm. um, so we've had that question come up before the Zoning Commission before. Okay, and just, I'm confident that it will be addressed by the Zoning Commission. Yeah, I just have one last question. Sure. Um, well, now it's gone. <laughs> uh, Oh, oh, about the, the public hearing. So we have had issues. Green Township, there is a lot going on in Green Township. We have a lot of items that come before us related to development in Green Township. And I think we've all um, said throughout the, the years, please do more engagement at the local level so that there's a, a better, better outreach to the community. And it sounds like in this case, and we just heard one where uh, the residents had not had the opportunity to talk to the developer, which I know gave me some angst. Uh, this does not sound like a situation like that where the developer did meet with the individuals and there was a public hearing at the local level so that folks, you know, because I think once it gets to the county process, I know it's a, a very deliberative process, but it, it can get a little more challenging, I think, for people to to weigh in. And so I'm, I'm glad to hear that that happened at Green Township level so that people had the opportunity to weigh in. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with no further discussion, is there any opposition from me, any of my colleagues to close, not to close the hearing? Okay. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Commissioner Samar Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we will digress in uh, good, good information um, and go back to. Um, Public comments from our from my colleagues. Um, since I had a lot to say at the beginning, you guys, you, I'm sure you have something to say about this being our first uh, public meeting. So, um, so I will start with uh, Vice President Reese. If you have any uh, comments or motions, uh, Madam President, uh, just again, just want to thank everybody who uh, came out for this meeting. And uh, certainly it's good for, for us to be in here. And this is my first meeting in here. So um, just looking forward to it. So um, that's all I have to say right now. So we can keep moving, I guess. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus, any comments or motions? I will be brief as well. Um, so yes, I'm very excited about being in person. Hurrah, we're all together. 
It's good to see everyone in person. Um, I also want to recognize I've had a change in my staff. Alex Linzer is now over at the Board of Elections. So Gina Marsh has joined my staff as my chief of staff. She's in the front row in the pink. Um, thank you, Gina, for being here. Uh, and, and so I, I also want to recognize that um, next week we're going to be swearing, or ne no, two weeks from now, because we're on our every other week schedule, we're going to be swearing in the new Commission on Women and Girls. Super excited about that. Uh, everyone's welcome. And then um, I was going to just mention that we all attended the, um, the dedication of the statue for Marion Spencer on the banks. Uh, first woman to be honored by way of a statue in the county for, is my understanding. And so uh, Marion Spencer was a trailblazer, um, did iconic work in Hamilton County. And I know we were all there to recognize such a significant tribute to such an icon. So um, that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I have no additional comments. I'd be remiss if I did not introduce my chief of staff since everybody else has. He came right at the beginning of the pandemic. Bishop Bobby Hilton is my chief of staff. So thank you so much. Uh, we will move forward to uh, Jeff Aluto. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, just a few by leave items today. Uh, we've already taken care of one of them that was uh, by leave number three in your packet um, related to the American Rescue Plan. Uh, by leave one in your packet uh, is a resolution declaring certain property no longer needed for public use and authorizing the termination of the present lease agreement with the University of Cincinnati. So as we have formally moved into the new crime lab facility up in Summit Park, um, there we have a lease that continues. It was in, entered into back in 1971, I believe. It was a 99-year lease. The county owns the, the building, which ultimately reverts back to University of Cincinnati uh, with the underlying real estate uh, belonging to the University of Cincinnati as well. So as we have moved out of that facility, uh, we are terminating the lease. Uh, there is a $3.4 million uh, lease termination payment from University of Cincinnati to the county to affect that lease. Uh, and this, provide, this resolution provides uh, the administration and the county prosecutor with the authorization to um, execute those lease termination uh, uh, agreements. The administration recommends approval. Thank you. You want to go into your bylaws or this, for the other one? Uh, you want me okay, to do this? Okay, okay. I'll, I'll just do one. the one. Okay. Okay. So um, any additional comments on the, the bylaws? So I make a motion to adopt bylaws one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, commissioners. This second bylaws item is bylaws number two in your packet. Uh, this is a resolution appointing one member to the Public Defender Commission. I'm happy to take this one, Madam President, unless you wanted to. Sure. I think it just, uh, I'll just say a, a couple words. It, it goes into um, Joe Mallory, the president of the NAACP, and how he has been pushing for quite a, a long time. I won't say pushing, I'll say advocating uh, that there needs some diversity and inclusion in every area of Hamilton County. And so I think this is an effort to uh, continue what we're trying to do uh, in this specifically is a public defender's uh, commission. Uh -huh. So we can move Thank you, Madam President. And this would specifically appoint Mr. Gabriel Fletcher uh, to the Hamilton County Public Defender Commission for a four year term said to expire July 1st, 2025. Thank you so much. Uh, any further discussion on that, Bailey? Uh, Madam President? Yes. Yes, I just want to also mention that uh, Attorney Gabriel Fletcher, who we're going to be appointing today, uh, is also someone who is, he's worked for a major law firm, but now works for the Ohio Justice and Policy Center. And we all know the work that they have done on the issue of justice around. Um, and also a uh, young man is from here, graduated from the University of Cincinnati Law School. So um, I'm very excited to uh, support this uh, appointment today. Uh, and I think it would be fitting. And again, want to also thank uh, Joe Mallory, the NAACP, but also this board, because I think we have set direction and policy that we want to get some new blood at the table, some diverse blood at the table, uh, so that we can, you know, continue to, to move forward. And everyone feels uh, included with new ideas and some new perspective or different perspective. So uh, I'm happy to support this. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm also happy to support this. I'm excited about uh, the new appointment. I also do want to recognize Bill Gallagher did serve uh, for, I think, five years and thank him for thank his you. service. Thank, thank you. you for bringing that up. 
and he has the opportunity if he wants to come back again, he can, because we will have two openings uh, next year in this same commission. It's just so important, these boards and commissions, the movers, and they are really the movers and shakers of Hamilton County, and they come to us on issues and concerns that they have that we need to be aware of. I asked for the uh, board of revision that looks at appeals for property assessments, and I needed someone to represent my office. It's the treasurer and the auditors that have representatives, and I only had two, so we were able to add three on, so we actually have, of course, two and three is five. We actually have five <laughs> representatives now, but it's just very good that they can represent my office and the other offices and give their perspective on what's going on as it relates to that. So I'd like to make a motion right now to adopt by leave two. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you, commissioners. And just one quick comment is uh, we all get back onto this floor and see people that we haven't seen in a year. There's going to be some new faces, some people that that we probably could pass for having worked here before because we just can't remember who was in the building and who wasn't <laughs> over a year ago. Um, but uh, up on this particular floor, we have several folks uh, starting. Uh, Cheryl Floyd, who is managing our, our new grants office. Uh, uh, we have Amina Addington, who's a budget analyst. Also, Mark Von Allman, who is with us today, is sitting back next to Holly Christman, who is our uh, senior policy manager for economic development, is going to be helping us uh, do a lot of the community revitalization work that is so important to the board's policy agenda. So just wanted to point out a couple of people and there'll be some more as we get into some of our future meetings as well. So uh, thank you for that time, Madam President. Thank you so much. Um, and I wanted to let everybody know, don't leave because we have a little reception out uh, for the first, our first day back. Um, well, maybe people could leave and you'll have more for yourself, but just wanted to let people know about that. So, Madam President, I, yes. I, I, I'm sorry. Rosalie, my intern is here too. So I don't want to forget you, Rosalie. She's sitting in the back. Um, so as long as we're recognizing sure. individuals that are helping the work, thank you for being Absolutely. here. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, my administrative assistant, Kim Lee. And, and Fatima. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, and Fatima. Okay. Fatima. And Fatima. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. We're gonna move forward and we're almost there um, <laughs> or to our regular agenda, uh, Mr. Eric Beck. Well, actually, Commission Administrator, you want to be yours first? Sure, Madam President. Sir, this is a regular agenda item number one in your packet. This is resolution number P072-21, authorizing the award of an ITB 038-21 uh, on behalf of Stadium Parking of a Marquee Replacement Board for Paul Brown Stadium. Uh, this is after 13 years of continued use. This is the exterior marquee board as you're coming over 75, and you see that, that board on the outside of of Paul Brown Stadium. We're actually consolidating several boards into one, so it'll be a little bit more efficient, offer some opportunity uh, for promotion of, of the county and other messages, uh, et cetera. This also came in uh, under budget. I believe we had 700,000 budgeted for it. It's 589,326. The administration recommends approval. Thank you so much. Any discussion on that item? Hearing none, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to adopt item number one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Mr. Reese. Yes. Mr. Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Now we have Mr. Eric Beck from the engineer department. Good afternoon. Again, this is a first for me. This is my first in-person commissioners yes. meeting. So I'm glad to be here. Mm -hmm. um, the first item is uh, item number two, which is a resolution approving the first amended amendment to IBI group engineering uh, for the Cleman Court Road Bridge. Um, as we've discussed before, typically with our engineering contracts, we do the first phase is the engineering, the second phase is the right of way. This is amending the contract by $14,622 to do the right of way work associated with this uh, engineering project. Okay. Thank you so much. Any questions on item number two? No questions. I'd like to make a motion to adopt item number two. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you so much. Item three. Okay. Item number three is a resolution authorizing the engineer to prepare and submit Ohio Public Works Commission applications to the state for the state capital improvement program and the local transportation improvement program for fiscal years 2021 round 35. There are six projects that we are going to apply for state grants for. This is an administrative item uh, required by the OPWC to allow the county engineer to enter into agreements. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we've been very successful been very with our successful. applications, which has really enabled us to leverage our money. Yeah, so thank you so much. 
Um, any discussion? I'd like to make a motion to adopt item number three. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Okay, item number four is a resolution uh, entering into an intergovernmental agreement with Columbia Township for the installation of a flashing pedestrian signal on Plainville Road at Grace Avenue. Um, the traffic study was performed by the township and um, follows the policy approved by the Board of County Commissioners. And we recommend allowing this to move forward to allow the township to put up the, uh, the flashing signal. So the township itself, Eric, uh, approached Hamilton County, was that it is the correct. residents? Or? That's correct. They okay. bring that to us. Mm -hmm. um, this is a uh, signage that's above and beyond what's required. It needs to meet a certain policy that was approved by the board. Mm -hmm. And the township actually pays for the cost of installation and maintenance. Okay. Great. That's good. Any discussion? Make a motion to adopt item, lose track, uh, item number four. Second. Commissioner Samara Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you. All item right. number five. Item number five is a uh, resolution for an intergovernmental agreement with the village of Glendale for the replacement of the Sharon Road Bridge, uh, Project 501607. This allows uh, the village of Glendale to do the bidding and administration of this project. Uh, current estimated cost is 405000 Again, this is another one where we've got OPWC funding in the 60% uh, uh, of the cost of 243,000. The remainder is being split evenly between Glendale and the county engineer coming out of permissive auto, which is 81,000. Um, and this, this agreement outlines both the uh, jurisdiction's responsibilities. Thank you. Any discussion on item five? Mm -hmm. I was just... Going to say I just told the administrator, boy, this is really cheap. But I, this is only a partial. Yes. <laughs> right, we're only yeah, playing for right. part of it. Yeah, we're only so paying I was like, part. whoa, what a deal! <laughs> that's that's the way we like it. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So I'd like to make a motion to adopt items uh, five. Second, Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes, Commissioner Reese. Yes, Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. All right. Item number six is a uh, awarding of a bid for East Miami River Road rehab and improvements. Project 501905. This project is located in Coleraine Townships. We opened the bids on May 13th. Uh, Barrett Paving and Materials was the low bidder. We had four bidders. Uh, the engineer's estimate was $1,178,980. The low bid was uh, lower than that at $1,149,788. Uh, again, this is 50% OPWC funds and 50% permissive auto. Very good. I'm, I'm laughing at you, Eric, a little bit because uh, you know what we expect to hear. Yes, I do. <laughs> and so you're just giving it to us. So I appreciate Try that. Try to answer your questions before you before ask Before we them. ask. So, okay. So um, any, any discussion? I'd like to make a motion to adopt item six. Second. Commissioner Samar Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh-huh. We have MSD up next. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. I'm Jack Rannekamp. I'm a division manager with MSD. And with me today also are our, dep our deputy directors, Mary Lynn Loader, who is also our chief operating officer, and Ryan Welsh, who is also our chief engineer. We have two items before you today, and I'll take them in turn. Um, and the first is item seven, which is a request to amend the approved 2021 MSD CIP to add additional funding for of $8.8 .8 million for the prioritized wastewater system, wastewater collection system improvements. Um, as I indicated, this, this legislation will amend the already adopted uh, MSD CIP to add additional funding to this allowance project. And this project is designed to address the need for structural renewal to existing high risk wastewater collection system assets. Uh, the allowance permits MSD to focus on structural renewal efforts, um, continue to focus on structural renewal efforts on these high risk assets, as well as the allowance permits MSD to continue to reduce the cost of reactive actions or reactive um, repairs that are made as a consequence of asset failure um, and focusing on high risk assets. Um, as of May 2021, 
MSD has expended 70% of the, the budget that was approved or the appropriation of 12 million that was part of the 2021 MSD CIP for this particular allowance. Um, and paying for work that is complete or earmarking funds for work that is already scheduled to be performed. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, we're happy to entertain them. Thank you. I'm just thinking about this major rain we had yesterday and all the issues that our people are having and MSD is such a big, massive um, issue, problem, the, our sewer system just in general. We know that. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. Um, I don't know what the remedy is. I guess a little bit at a time. Um, you know, you guys continue to give us information as we ask for it. Um, but it is such a major and it's almost cost prohibitive for us, but we have to do it. Um, but um, hoping that we can leverage the money even better. I know you didn't get all that you wanted from, from us, uh, but you're trying to make it work. Um, but um, I understand what this is for. So I just had to make that statement. Nothing that you didn't already know. So I'll open it up for discussion. Vice President. Um, yep, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, just so this will take us from 12 million allotted to 20 to 20.8 million. 20.8 million. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Driehaus. Yeah, and I too was going to um, mention I don't know if we can get a, just a brief update about some of the flooding that occurred, mm -hmm. as you said, mm -hmm. yesterday or last night, but I do have a specific question related to this. So, so just to, I, I need some clarity here. So, we uh, approved a CIP budget. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so this is a project that's been approved through the CIP. Um, and, and what struck me about it was the large dollar amount because it's an $8 million uh, proposal here. And so the $8 million, though, was it allotted to other approved CIP projects that are not being funded with this $8 million as we shift it over into another project? And what happens to the other CIP projects? I'm going to turn to oh, our deputy director to answer your question. Thank okay. you, Commissioner. Um, thank you very much for uh, um, allowing us up here and, and talking about this and to try to answer your question. Um, so the, uh, I want to uh, reiterate that, um, so we're asking for $8 million added to the, um, the wastewater collection prioritized allowance. And um, every construction legislation needs to come to the board. And, um, and this is, and our, our budget is broken out into exhibit A, which is planning design and easements. Um, exhibit B is for allowances. That's where this is getting added to. And then exhibit, or, or, or the rest, um, I think there's an exhibit C, and that's for all of the defined capital projects. So we are, um, with this legislation, we're actually asking, uh, we're anticipating about, um, about $81 million to actually be appropriated, whereas the original budget request was 123. We're anticipating with some of the deferrals um, that we're having or delays that we're having with projects that we're not going to be at that 123 level. So we'll actually be under um, the amount of dollars requested by to the board in 2021 with this because of those uh, delays or deferrals. And so any of those construction dollars of those, um, those projects that have to come to the, that have to go into construction we have to physically bring that legislation to you. So we're anticipating we're not going to be bringing that legislation to you for asking for those appropriations. So basically, we've got some delays on other projects that Correct. are in the CIP. And so that has freed up the money for this purpose. So mm -hmm. if you could, I, I just want to kind of keep, because we hear a lot about MSD has been, has been referenced. Um, I would be interested to know which, what's being delayed, why it's being delayed. You don't have to do it now, but yep. um, maybe on the side, get us that information so that we're aware of the 8 million that's being um, deferred somewhere else. Uh, and as this 8 million gets moved around. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Madam President, if I could just briefly, sure. um, uh, just on that note, I believe MSD is scheduled for a CIP update with the board next oh, month. Right. So yep. mm -hmm. good time to. That'll do it. Thank right. you. Right. And can we get an update on the flooding? Would you mind? Sure. I, I'm sure. Floor. I can absolutely give. Um, I've been uh, trying to get things as I've, you know, you've had a great, ooh, sorry. Mm -hmm. you've had a great meeting here. Lots of good stuff. And I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, trying to multitask and get lots of updates of what's going on. We do have, you know, as you know, a significant rain event um, that started last night. And I got to say, too, just the whole. Um, you know, Green Township, uh, the con conservation 
development type things. Those are the kinds of things that we need to be doing more of in terms of, you know, utilizing streams for what they're there for, right? It's for days like this, you know? Um, and many times we've had, uh, you know, our system is such that it's, it's designed to be a combined sewer system. And so we are in a very, we have a very challenging situation as it relates to um, our region and, and the way that stormwater is, is managed. Um, and so just to give you a snapshot of this particular event, it is an extreme wet weather event um, in some areas of the county, um, probably around um, like really the, the north, uh, the north central area, um, you know, which is Hartwell, um, I think uh, Wyoming area, as well as up in, you know, Forest Park potentially and, and um, Sharonville um, gets to be about a 50 or a hundred year storm interval. Um, storm reoccurrence interval for this particular storm that we had. The south mid, um, uh, south mid eastern area, so Hyde Park, Oakley, that's also ex has experienced like a hundred or 50 year storm um, frequency. Uh, so that's what we know right now. We are currently investigating almost um, 350 different service requests right now. Um, we also know with this type of a storm intensity that we have, um, it's really, uh, a situation that we have a lot of soil that is saturated. So the soil doesn't, you know, can't absorb any more water. Many times, you know, some of those streets in those areas that I mentioned, um, you know, might actually have those streets look like streams, you know, because this is an intense sort of storm that many, uh, stor many systems like those, you know, MSD is managing, they're not equipped to be able to take on that amount of capacity. So like you said, we, we do have a lot of work um, to do. We're doing a lot of work. It's a long-term effort. We have a lot of different pilots that we're doing right now to try to be creative, not just do the same old thing that we've always done because we do that. You know, we're going to get the same old thing we got. So we, we know we have to do more creative things. We're doing more creative things. And, um, and our crews are working very hard. Um, we have 20 crews out there right now that are, you know, trying to just get into all the investigations that they need to. We have new tools that we, you know, we, we can actually tell how much you know depth actually the su the sewer actually surcharged and what the likelihood of that um, of the the the, um, the event that a person might be experiencing as to whether it was caused by an MSD situation or if it is a a private issue or an overland flooding issue. So we have tools that we're using. We be very we're very diligent to try to do the best we can to get with the information that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, so this will take, you know, the rest of the day, the rest of the evening, probably the rest of the week for us to really get through all of the investigations we need to do and make sure that we're doing everything we can to make sure we're, you know, accurately differentiating what's our, mm -hmm. you know, what's our obligations here. Thank you. Thank you. And, and when you say 350 requests, it sounds like a lot, but it's, it's not in my opinion. And I, I'm thinking, what are you guys, what can you guys do to maybe pass the word more, let more people know uh, the ability to have some help, some assistance with that SBU program. I know as a board, we decided to extend from 24 hour um, notification to 48 hour notification, right. but still people don't know that they can get help. And so maybe you and Diana and Ryan can just think about can we do some kind of blast on television or Sure, something? yeah. And I know that Diana has been mm -hmm. uh, in, in contact with mm -hmm. some media today already, Good. as well as um, the Hamilton County Emergency Management mm -hmm. Agency. And we're, right. um, she's working with um, Mr. Crosley to, to get things in order and overlay where our issues are and their issues are. And, you know, so we are trying to coordinate with that and um, do agree that we need to, you know, um, do try to get more information out. We actually do. I'll, I'll put a plug in for this. We've um, s trying to start something new. It's called Let's Connect with MSD. It's mm -hmm. a um, it's a it's it's ten intended to be a virtual meeting because you know I think there are some good things that came out of the pandemic, such as the ability for people to connect in the homes in their homes with anybody they want to or whatnot, and to be able to have a public meeting virtually. We're going to try to do that and just bring kind of relevant information to the public and do that in a way that we can try to share some stuff, get some feedback right. and, you know, just try to do that better. So we're committing to try to do that three times a year. Mm -hmm. um, so in J July, as well as November and then March. Right. And again, just try to be more uh, in tune with what um, mm -hmm. our customers are experiencing and how we can help them. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, can I just add something mm -hmm. to that? Um, one of the things, um, so my background's in marketing and the world has changed. And so a lot of times we say, oh, we just, we did a press conference and that was good. Mm 
but we've got to reach the customer in a lot of variety of ways. And so one of the things our board has said is, Looks, listen, we're going to use technology. We're going to be hitting people at different ways and where they are, um, because the biggest thing out of this is relief. And relief is not just for COVID. Mm -hmm. We want to bring relief to people uh, you know, every day of the week. So when we have all this money that we're passing this million, eight million a day, and we had millions the other day, uh, people are watching at home and then they say, oh my God, look at my basement. This is a mess. Or I saw someone on Facebook say, I'm live right now on Vine Street. And it looked unbelievable right in real time. So uh, I would like to uh, when you know, not today, but when we come back, I'd like to see a good, what is our marketing plan for today's times mm -hmm. to reach the uh, people. Cause the, one of the biggest things is they can't get resources if they don't really have the information. And we're kind of like inside, uh, inside football or basketball. We hear it and we, we love to feel like everybody's paying attention to us 24 hours, but yep. you know, people working two and three jobs, trying to make it, trying to hold on and they might miss it. So I would love for us to have, look at a, a, a new way of rolling out uh, a multi-layer marketing uh, initiative to be able to get to people, you know, you should get a text message and tell you, they can give you a text message for your bill. They should be able to give you a text message to say, we've got some help for you. So those are the kind of things I love for us to look at as we, you know, move forward. Thank you. Great. And as you talk about the tech bus, just the whole application of SVU, uh, we can put that on the bus, even though they're going for social service reasons or a vaccination, have it on there, you know, so, okay. Um, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. All righty. No further discussion. Um, can I have a motion to adopt item number seven? Second. Com Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Dreams? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. We have one more item uh, for your consideration. That's item number eight, which is titled the Green Township Oak Hills RDII Study. So RDII is an acronym for Rainfall Derived Infiltration Inflow, which means on a day like today, where is uh, the, the system, the sewer system being over capacity, specifically a, a sanitary system, over capacity for um, flows that it wasn't designed to take, meaning stormwater in that particular situation. These can come from a variety of sources and um, including stuff that's attached to a property as well as stuff that's in the right of way as part of the, the public system. What this study will do, will update a previous study that was done on this area um, to look at rainfall derived infiltration and inflow, and as well as to look at the possible solutions, both solutions that are looking to remove any RDII sources um, as possible. Uh, for your information, MSD had a program in the past to remove these types of sources and still has the possibility of uh, having that program from downspouts, driveway drains, um, area drains, but also looking at the existing infrastructure and what needs to be changed to increase capacity within the system um, so you don't have uh, certain types of react reactions as could occur on, on rain days such as today. So this study um, uh, is based upon some uh, specific issues, one of which is a one manhole at the, the Stonebridge Lake condominiums that experienced significant capacity problems with uh, sanitary sewers within the sanitary sewer system. Um, and prior studies have identified, as I indicated, the potential for um, RDII reduction projects within this area, um, as well as specific RDII removal projects. Um, this study was also, or this effort, excuse me, was uh, also an outgrowth of the 2020 legislation that your board adopted concerning the upper Muddy Creek uh, interceptor sewer. And so this was one of the requests that was part of that resolution to conduct this study. And we're bringing that forward at this point in time for your consideration. If you have any questions, uh, Ryan Welsh is with me today to answer any things that you may ask. Thank you. Uh, uh, my question is um, how did Green Township get chosen for this study? And I'll defer to you. So, um, thank you, Hi. Commissioner. Uh -huh. uh, the, this 
area where the problem is happens to be in Green Township. Mm -hmm. It's uh, upstream of the Stonebridge Lakes uh, community mm -hmm. uh, in the project that we're currently designing there that's already been approved. Mm -hmm. um, the reason for this particular study, it came as a request from the county mm -hmm. uh, in that resolution that, that Jack mentioned that was mm -hmm. passed last year, it specifically asked MSD to bring forward a study um, to study this upstream area. Um, so, Thank you, Ryan. Are, so we, are we also studying other areas in the county? We have a lot of studies going on. Can I get uh, a list of that? Can we get a list well, of that? Yeah, absolutely. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any additional discussion? Yeah, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but we got a lot of communications about flooding into a lake and then into people's properties, and it was uh, sewage. Uh, it wasn't stormwater. Uh, from my recollection. And so that was part of uh, the conversation around this, I believe. And then we, and it all was tying into the larger project um, in the Muddy Creek, right? That we that's, were, we were working true. on. So it was, it was the kind of the upstream portion. We were like, mm -hmm. could we do something upstream to negate some of the difficulties we were having downstream and that I think was part of the mm -hmm. conversation here. So this is the if furthest point upstream yeah. in the, mm -hmm. the UMCI basin. That other project, the Stonebridge project that mm -hmm. is uh, being designed right now <coughs> will, um, will solve the problem of the overflowing mm -hmm. manhole at the Stonebridge Lakes community. Um, this upstream area, if there's anything we can do there, that will only help mm -hmm. uh, both at Stonebridge and uh, the UMCI, all the overflows that we have downstream near the Ohio River. So. Okay. Right. I, I just had to ask that question because I'm thinking about Vice President Reese said Green Township keeps coming up. And I was like, on. so a lot going <laughs> a lot on. So going on. and we want to make sure we, you know, of course, we're being fair. So I'll get that list from you. So any additional discussion? Yes, Madam President. Mm -hmm. um, just in the your testimony, you said this is a study on top of a study. Now, I wasn't here, and so I know this uh, was agreed to before. I just want to make the comment. I'm not, like, big on studies. So hopefully, um, I know it won't be today, if I, when we get the list, I'd like to know what happened out of the studies. Did we fix anything? Did we help anybody? Because uh, I'm really, when you yeah. said that, you said this is a study on top of a study. Mm -hmm. I said, well, wait a minute. How many yeah, times we're going to study? Real briefly explain that. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was work that was done over 10 years ago in the 2000s. It did identify several opportunities. Um, some of those sewers were relined. A lot of the things okay. were addressed. The Stonebridge uh, Lakes, the project that we're doing right now, is a really a uh, solve some of the problems that were identified in that study. So this is to look at it again, do an update. Um, what can we do now? And what's gotcha. necessary now. So action came out of the study. Yes. So I will support that. <laughs> yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to make a motion to adopt item eight. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you both. And I also want to express that MSD is pleased to be here live in person. <laughs> Ditto. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you so much. Okay, we will move forward on our consent items. Um, I'm actually gonna change the protocol, what I was gonna do. Normally what I do for those that are listening or in the room is um, summarize what those consent agenda items are. We have um, item nine all the way through 21. I will not do that today if it's okay with the commission. I will just indicate that item nine, 19 and 20 are items for uh, actions we need to uh, receive for the record, 9, 19, and 20. Um, and those are, there were six actually, actually liquor licenses was part of that. So 9, 19, and 20. Is there, I'd like to make a motion to receive for the record. Second. Mr. Summer Dumas? Yes. Mr. Reese? Yes. Mr. Driehaus? Yes. Thank you. And then we have items 10 through 18 and item 21 to adopt. Um, I'd like to make a motion to adopt those. Second. Mr. Summer Dumas? Yes. Mr. Reese? Yes. Mr. Driehaus? Yes. Thank you. I believe that's all we have. Um, at this point, if there is any more discussion or anything that the, my colleagues would like to say. I, Madam President, yes. I just, uh, again, thank uh, those who came out today and certainly those who are still watching. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also want to uh, thank um, 
Aisha uh, from our, uh, our engagement officer, uh, as well as Tim from uh, JFS uh, and everyone who has been working, going out with the bus. The 513 bus is out and uh, it's bringing relief and also the Free Store Food Bank. So it's, it's like a caravan of relief. We're bringing food, we're bringing rental assistance, uh, all of our programs, child assistance and our safe, babe, safe sleep program. Uh, there were uh, mothers that came forward. They were, the team was out on the street and mothers were coming over to learn uh, so that we can reduce the infant mortality uh, rate. So I just want to say uh, that is going very well and people can go to 513relief.org. I know Bridget likes uh, saying that all the time, 513relief.org to find out where the bus is going next. Uh, but uh, the feedback has been good and also thanks to our partners uh, at UC Health. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Driehaus. Yeah, just uh, to pile on with the 513 relief, we just passed the ARP and so all of the relief um, is going to be available there. And so if you want to get notified as to when things open up and when the funding becomes available, jump on there, sign up, and then you can be notified um, about all of the things that we just passed. Thank you. Thank and you. I want to thank our interpreter who's here for the first time. She's a, she's a new one, I think. I've never seen her before. Vicki. Oh, Vicki. Yeah. yeah, so I'm sorry, don't mean to interrupt. No. So Vicki was with us yes. through every single COVID briefing, but Jay was the one on the camera who is not easily forgotten. <laughs> Jay is, um, and, and so Jay is, uh, is deaf. Mm -hmm. And so Vicki right. was hearing us signing to Jay and Jay was signing out. Mm -hmm. um, so today we only have Vicki, not only, we're delighted to have Vicki, but yeah, she's in the back of the room and I'm so grateful that we are having her present now at our meetings. Absolutely. It's so good to see staff here, but I promise you, if you come back, uh, that it, the meetings will not be as long. I sort of promise you. A little bit, sorry. So, right, right. So at this point, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Commissioner. Summer Dumas? Yes. Mr. Reese? Yes. Mr. Dreamhouse? Yes. Thank you. We're adjourned.